excited that you're here today because as always, I have an incredible guest star and I can't wait for y'all to be. Hey, Kara, how are you? Hi. So Kara is incredible and she's going to tell you all about her incredible book coming out here soon and we're going to just have a lot of fun. But before we do that, I want you to be involved in a huge phone app opportunity where it will showcase you for an entire week with passive income. What do you mean, Tanya? I'm creating a app called Wildable. And Wildable is really designed to help coaches find new clients and make money the whole time. So go find out all about it at wildable.com. W-O-W and then double, like incredible. So D-I-B-L-E dot com. Wildable. All right. So let's get back over to Kara. So Kara, I know you're an expert in communication. It's really authentic communication. What is that all about? Yeah. So essentially, I've been working in the field of conflict management for over 10 years. I've worked with businesses. Um, my specialty is workplace conflict. And over the years, I noticed that, of course, that there's a gap in communication in both our personal and professional lives. Find that a lot of times it's kind of personality driven because I know my husband talks different language than I talk, and then we're like, "What are you saying?" <laughs> yeah, well, that, I mean, is is the perfect question. Um, actually, one of the courses that I teach at the University of Alberta in the School of Business is around communication, and we look at what I call different lenses. So that can be personality, culture, generation. Um, even, you know, there's some studies around gender-based communication. That's that's a controversial topic, but um, <laughs> but yeah, but exactly, you got it, Tanya. That there we we speak uh, based on different preferences and who we are. So it's when we're communicating, um, it's all about tailoring our messages to who we're talking to. Yeah, I know when I help my clients, you know, who people are like, I want to be a speaker. You know, one of the things that shocks them is they think that they need to elevate their speaking to this, you know, amazing professional level. When I'm like, no, 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 no. Talk to the audience as if they're in fifth grade or they're my 90 year old grandfather. And that way they understand you, right? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And there's the language, right? It needs to be a language that everyone understands and that everyone gets. And when you say, um, you know, I heard underneath what you were saying that people want to be polished and they want to look professional. And, and that's common for our everyday communication and communication on stage. But really what people are looking for is to get to know us, like to see our passion and to feel our energy. And it's not about using big words and speaking perfectly. It's about connection. Yeah, it's funny to me how I... You know, I use certain words, and they just, you know, things that I love, like yippee and, you know, fabulousness. And, and so the other day, a lady was like, oh, I heard another person use yippee. Like, like oh. it's my word. <laughs> what else <laughs> your, your proprietary language. <laughs> and to me, it's just about being authentically me, because I used to be like, oh, I need to speak this way. And it wasn't me. And you could feel it wasn't me, right? Well, and there's, you know, there's people who feel pressured to speak a certain way at work or to speak a certain way um, even with their spouse or um, with a family member. So sometimes people put on, put expectations, I would say, on themselves. Um, according to how they're going to speak. So the, the st speaking style or, or the type of even relationship they want to create, like some people think that they need to create a very um, uh, guarded, almost guarded relationship with their manager. And, you know, at the end of the day, whatever relationship that we're creating, it, again, it's important that it be, um, that it be real, right? That when we have those expectations that we put on ourselves, it creates a barrier from creating that, that authentic connection. Is there a way for people to kind of break through that mindset that there's this specific way of approaching a conversation or to kind of look at themselves and say, this is really the way I should be speaking? I would say read my book. <laughs> 
You know, the thing I said, the thing about my books, I always say some people like to read a book uh, front to back, some people a chapter jumps out, or sometimes, you know what, you can pick up a book and a few pages will make all the difference in the world. So, so when I see read my book, pick it up and, you know, and, and read what speaks to you. But yeah, really, I, um, and the way I describe it, Tanya, is working from the inside out. So whether it's my book or someone else's book, I really believe in um, in reflection and self awareness, so that we're we're heightening our communication, but from the inside out. Yes. When you say from the inside out, are you talking about figuring out who, what your core values are, and who your core, your like core, and you know what I'm trying to say? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It's it it does sound a bit cliche inside out. So. So what I mean is, for instance, confidence, right? That's something that in our communication, we want to demonstrate confidence. So we can watch YouTube videos around um, establishing eye contact and our posture and smiling. And those are all really important. And at the end of the day, um, for in what I mean by inside out is we're going to smile more in our communication when we're happy in our life like truly happy in our life that will shine through in our eyes, in our, you know, in our gestures, in our, in our smile. And so for instance, confidence, it's like, okay, if I'm not feeling confident in certain situations or in life in general, or in my physical body, what's that all about? And how can I dig into that? So that then, you know, I'm, I'm working on that from the inside out, creating happiness in my life. So that shines in who I am with other people and how I present myself. I can totally relate to that. You know, in 2005, when I was such an introvert, and I know people are like, let every you intro. Oh, I'll show you everyone. So this was me in 2005. And this was me, ladies, holiday gala. Okay, this is what I wore to a gala. Yeah, it's pretty bad. So I had to, because I was quiet and shy. And of course, then no one really wanted to do business with me. And I was like, I don't get it. You know, I've got this great product and service that I can really help with people. But then I started realizing that the people that everyone gravitated to, people could hear just at a networking group. I'm like, no one can hear me. You know, <laughs> the first step was just like, hello, I'm Tanya Hoffman. You know, and suddenly people were like, oh, there's someone there, you know. <laughs> Yeah, I love I love that example because what you're talking about is um, emotional intelligence, right? So you recognize that there was a part of you, and yes, that's who you had been, and and you work to shift it. I mean, I'm, I'm sometimes that can shift a little bit overnight, and it also takes time, right? So emotional intelligence is all about, you know, if if there's a, it, sometimes you will need to tone it down. So every everyone's different, right? But <laughs> example thank you for that picture <laughs> <laughs> i know people just don't they see you today they don't see your journey right they yeah. see Kara today and they're like oh my gosh she's amazing but they don't see the journey that you've been on that's right that's right <laughs> yeah yeah we all have those we all have those pictures that we uh that we that are on we don't always display <laughs> yeah. I, I found that picture in a drawer uh, a few years back when I was starting to become a speaker, and at first I was like, oh my gosh, what was I, what was my hair, oh my God, and it brought back on so many memories, and I'm like, oh, this would be, and I was going to throw it away, right, because it was like, horrible, and I was like, oh, I could use this picture, because <laughs> it's communicating yes. something, right, yes. it really tells people a story. Exactly, I love it, <laughs> and, I, and I love that about you, we had a, just a fantastic conversation on the phone a couple weeks ago, and you're so um, you're so real, and people feel that. I mean, it, just your transparency and your honesty, and 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 more than anything, what I could feel in our phone conversation with you is that you really care about people, and and that's so clear in everything you do. You know, your event coming up in London, and and people feel that. I mean, people want to know that you really care about them. It doesn't matter whether you're a public speaker or you're an engineer, or you're an accountant, or whatever your profession is, really at the end of the day, everyone just wants to know that you care, which is, I, I love that about you. Yeah, just, and I always, you know, <laughs> I 
I love that. Thank you for that. Because to me, it's also about who you around yourself. So if you're communicating right to the people around you that you're a certain type of person, you should be able to draw those people to you and push away the ones that don't fit. So for me, it's the transactional people that they just want the money. They don't really care what they have to do to get it. The star five peeps, the people who want money because they want to change lives in the process. Those are my peeps. Well, and I love that. I mean, there's an element in anything we do of transaction, right? Even with our with our kids, with our spouse, with our um, with our mom, with our dad, our brothers and sisters, our clients, and um, yeah, it's more than that. You know, my aunt said to me a few years ago. Um, she's just such a cool person. She said, "Wouldn't it be?" She was talking about a friend of hers and how her friend is always so generous, and then. You know, and then she's always thinking about how she can give to her friend, and it keeps going around and around, right? And uh, Dr. Sean Duperin talks about that as the cycle of reciprocity. And and I and she said, wouldn't it be amazing if all our relationships and all our lives were like that? And so, you know, even when we talk about communication, that's the part that I mean in terms of inside out, because you can you can communicate or try to communicate generosity till the cows come home. But at the end of the day, it's how you interact with people and the action that really matters. So, yeah, people feel that, absolutely. Love it, love it, love it. So I know we talked a little bit about your book, and yeah. um, you've got, uh, like, a really cool where people download a couple chapters and, you know, kind of test drive while you're getting it all ready, right? Yes, thank you. So um, on my website, karaderinger.com, and do you want me to spell that out? or? That's probably a good idea. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Speaking of communication, <laughs> so it's K-A-R-A-D as in Delta, E-R-I-N-G as in George, E-R dot com, karaderinger.com. And yeah, I'm often changing the chapters that I'm giving away. So I have a first book, Chill, a second book, Chica, and the new book, Chirp. So whenever you go onto the website, you're going to get a sneak peek um, of a book. And and that's my gift to you for you to check out the work, um, take that and leave it. Or there's links on there to Amazon so that you can order whatever book or books call to you. My books are other people's books. Awesome. I love your titles. They're like so awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so yeah, go get our books. I mean, you know, yeah. that's what I love. <laughs> There's so much information and sometimes it's a little bit of info overload. So you find someone that you really resonate with and you just dive into their world and books are a great way to really kind of experience somebody um, and kind of get a lot of information in a very short amount of time. So that's awesome. And I tell a lot of uh, personal stories in my book. So <laughs> people sometimes say they feel like they're reading my, my diary or my journal. Um, so, so if you're looking for, you know, some juicy personal examples and, you know, and hopefully just a really light bedside read or, you know, a book to put at the side of your desk, then absolutely, that's what I aim for. So, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, we love the easy ones. I have a friend that I love her to death, but... She's a professor, and everything talks as if you're trying to take a course. You're like, ugh. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Well, it's so funny you say that because I actually wrote uh, this third book, Chirp, because for the course that I teach at the university, I've been looking for a good, real, practical book for years. And, and of course, I had certain things I wanted to say that I just couldn't find in another book, so I had to write one. (laughs) go yeah <laughs> i love that you can't find it do it that's why i created exactly. the Public speakers association i didn't find it so i went and created it <laughs> exactly <laughs> oh love it love it love it all right everyone so go to caring daring jerk with an a so d-a-r right d-e-r d-e-r see there you go that's good so daring jerk and that way you can grab her books and check out the free little sample one um but get connected to her so that you know, it's not just, oh, I'm going to, you know, kind of follow her on social media, but you actually have conversations with her, um, especially if you're looking for a speaker or someone that you want to bring in and do some training for your company or just for your organization or just for yourself. Uh, we all need the help. So just reach out and say hello to her. 
So awesome. Thank you, Kara. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. This has been so fun. I just, you know, anytime you want to chat on YouTube, Tanya, or on the phone, you just give me a call. <laughs> Yeah, anytime. I'm always up for that. <laughs> All righty, everybody. So remember, go to thewildable.com to check out the phone app. And then we have about two hours left of speaking opportunity time at the Public Speakers Conference in London, England. Not London, Kentucky. So if you're wanting to become an international speaker overnight, or maybe you're in London, you want to be connected to the all the U.S. people coming over who put on their own conferences, go check it out at publicspeakerswithanSconference.com. All righty, let's have some fun. Go out there, change some lives, do something amazing for yourself, and let's just have some fun. So thanks, everybody. Thank you, Kara. Bye, everybody.